harvested the rice, now we're at the business end where we mill the rice into a product to eat. So uh, the first thing that happened after we harvested the rice is we took it to dry it. It was at a moisture content of about 21% from memory and we took it and dried it in a flatbed dryer down to a moisture of about 14%. So Martin's going to uh, measure the moisture content of a sample before our eyes and hopefully it's what I claim it is. Yeah. So I can't actually measure the sample uh, that, that has been in the mill because uh, it's already milled. Yeah. But I have another sample here. And uh, the ideal moisture content for, for milling is between 13 and 14 percent. And uh, so the first step would basically be to measure the moisture content. And this is an example for a moisture meter, the Erie moisture meter. You, you put a small sample of grains in there and then you crush them. And then by measuring the resistance, it gives you the moisture content. And this uh, basically tells you that uh, the sample that we have is still too wet. We couldn't use that for milling. So that's more than 16%? It's more, more than 14%. More than 14 in, in this case. And, and uh, basically this would also tell us if it's right for milling, between 12 and 14%, or whether it's right for seeds. What happens if you mill it when it's wetter than 14%? If you mill it wetter, then the grain is very soft, and, and we get a lot of damage in the, in the rice mill by uh, basically the, the uh, crushed. machines uh, crushing crushing the grains and, and so your milling yield would be a lot lower. And what if it's too dry? If it's too dry then it's too brittle and again you get uh, because of mechanical stress you get more cracking uh, because it's so brittle and again you get more, more losses. Okay. Okay. And, so, and for the drying there are different options. Uh, the, this grain was dried in the flatbed dryer uh, and but the flatbed dryer is a very simple technology that can be locally produced and produces a reasonably good quality but then there are also more sophisticated dryers like we have one over there which is a so-called recirculating batch dryer which allows us to produce really the optimum quality of, of the paddy before we do the milling. Okay, okay. So when we were growing the crop, or well particularly when we were harvesting the crop, our goal was to harvest the crop at about 20-21% moisture and then dry it down because that will give us the greatest grain quality. And um, yield, um, whole, whole grain yield through the mill. Now what do I mean by whole grain yield? If you come over to our little demonstration bench over here, is to start with the paddy, the paddy, to remove the husk, to remove the bran layer which is just underneath the husk and that's what brown rice still has the brown layer and to get whole grain and broken grain. There's not much we can do to manipulate the quantity of husk we have Likewise, there's not much we can do to manipulate the amount of bran we have, but the whole idea of the management in the field and in the drying process and the milling process itself is to get as much whole grain as possible and as little broken grain. The whole grain is worth a lot, the broken grain isn't worth so much. So in most markets, uh, the mm. rice is uh, traded according to different quality standards, and one of the standards, for example, uh, looks at the percentage of, of uh, broken grains. So, so you would have typically standards that say, for example, uh, rice with 5% broken. So there would be 95% whole grains and 5% broken. Similarly, there's rice with 10% broken and also with 25% broken. And one of the objectives of rice milling is then also basically to produce according to that standard. And there are different equipments in the rice mill that help us doing that. After the, the grain has been dried uh, to the appropriate moisture content, it's, it's then delivered to the mill. And the first stage is the dehulling, where we have two rubber rollers set at a, a very close clearance to each other. And one roller is travelling just a little bit slower than the other roller. And that, that abrasion motion, that, that pincer motion, removes the husk from the rice. It then goes on to a gravity table, which then, in a, in a horizontal reciprocating motion, uh, it, it's on a slight angle. and that successfully removes the, the hulled rice, the hulled brown rice, from the rice that was not successfully hulled. And the rice that was not successfully hulled goes back to be de-hulled again. After that it goes through three stages of polishing. An abrasion stone polisher, a friction polisher, and then you also have a choice of a mist polisher if you want that final, shall I call it sheen, uh, for a really quality, uh, quality, high quality product that really looks 
as desirable as it tastes. And there's one final process after the polishing process. It's then, it's then graded for size, both through a rotary sifter and through a length grader. And that separates the whole rice from the broken rice. Ironically then, the broken rice is often then mixed back into the whole rice, but at a known percentage. It's typically 5% mutton. There are very different standards. The mm -hmm. best quality is usually has 5% broken. And the worst quality? And the worst quality, 25% broken. Mm -hmm. and, and then beyond that, uh, local markets often don't implement those standards. So there you might find 60% broken or even more, depending on, on the quality of the raw material and also the performance of the rice mill. Okay. So it is usually broken grains are mixed back into the whole grains at a, at a known standard, you know, typically 5 to 25%. The final stage in a sophisticated rice mill is the colour sorter, which is an ingenious piece of technology that, that runs uh, streams of, of, of milled rice grain in a, in a single grain stream. Uh, there's, there's sensors that sense the colour of individual grains, and if the colour does not, is not white enough, basically, that could be from poor milling, it could be because it's a foreign object like a stone. There's nothing as much fun as a stone in your rice. Uh, a, a short, sharp jet of uh, compressed air will remove the grain. And so the, those, that final high standard sorting process is, is quite a common process in, in high standard rice mills. And then hence you have the finished product. Uh, whole grain, well milled rice with a known quantity of brokens in it. And that's really the objective of the whole process. So there we have it. The business end. This is where the white rice that we, we know and enjoy is produced. And we've, we've covered off on the processes before the milling and during the milling that allow us to produce as much quality white rice as possible and a minimum of everything else. And the objective is really to sort of uh, use the potential of the paddy and, and get the maximum amount of whole grains and, and the minimum amount of brokens and also basically uh, present it in a way that the consumers really like it.